This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play back in Studio B on a Monday, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is November 1st. What? Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with BYUSN's resident beekeeper, Jerem Jordan. Now, Calvin Whiting, former rugby player here, he actually helps keep some bees on his in-laws' uh, property there. You've got the inside track. Uh, yes, I know nothing. Uh, you got stung by a bee Saturday. <laughs> what happened? It was so strange. First of all, it's late October. Not thinking about bees roaming around the yeah. stadium at uh, Lavelle Edwards Stadium, but I reached into a candy bowl, which was probably my first issue, uh, at the behest of uh, Alana Tilly, one of our coworkers, and felt this intense pain shooting through my fingertip. And I thought, for a minute, I'm like, is there like a live wire in there, or like what in the world? Needle? Yeah, and is it like, <laughs> so some what? random needle that's washed up from a shore? <laughs> <laughs> Great Salt Lake, the, right. Utah Lake. I pull out my finger, and there's this huge bee stinger sticking out of the tip of my finger. And I was like, well, that's not normal. So at that point, I'm like looking in the candy bowl for a bee. I can't see anything. And then I am pulling the stinger out, which my 10-year-old Jack said, you shouldn't have done that. You're supposed to brush it off because when you pull it out, it allows more of the uh, venom to get in your finger. And I'm like, Jack's is an expert in Settle this. down. Uh, yeah, he gave me the expert analysis after the fact. But I pulled that thing out. And my finger was throbbing and numb for like the first half an hour of the pregame show. You were playing hurt? Because of this random bee sting. Well, we found the culprit at halftime. This poor bee dies because that's what happens when they sting you. But this massive bee was found on the floor of our set at Lavelle Stadium on October 30th. What? And that is my harrowing story from Saturday night. Bronco Mendenhall in Virginia sent a bee into the candy bowl. I think that's really weird. By the way, talk to him for a sec after the game. It was great to talk for a moment. He was he was really nice. Fantastic to but catch like, up I'm, with some of those guys. Yeah. Yes, and I feel bad because I didn't get over to talk to you enough of the assistants. So uh, I know they listen sometimes. So what's up, guys? I really missed you. I'm sorry. Well, uh, Virginia we'll stung BYU to the tune of 35 nice. points in the second quarter. Well done, anchor boy. I'm sorry, man. You okay? I'm okay. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I still have a, a little bit of. Oh, a... look at that. Zoom in on that. <laughs> look at his finger. <laughs> look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. You're really going to zoom in on this? Joe, okay. right here. Okay, you see? Look at that. You, see you can that? still see it. Yeah. Playing hurt, uh-huh. man. Gotta Listen. Light goes on. You got to go. Jaron Hall wasn't the only guy playing with an injury. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Maybe I should get some makeup for that. <laughs> no. War wounds, man. All right, I know you love the anchor lines, Jerem. A Monday show them. lineup today swarming okay. with BYU hype after an unforgettable win. 66 points, over 700 yards of total offense, five touchdowns from Tyler Algier, 42 points given up by BYU in the first half. What was the craziest thing you saw during the Virginia-BYU game on Saturday night? ESPN's Trevor Maddich makes his weekly stop on the show to discuss the madness and how high BYU can climb in the rankings if the Cougars win out and get to 10-2. and Fresh off a sweep of the WCC Cross Country Championships, head coach Ed Isone joins us to discuss the key to another national title run. Plus, Jerem, is UFC President Dana White now a BYU fan? I didn't know this. (laughs) I'll tell you why. And get ready for a uniform combo dubbed simply the Midnight Virgil. Yes. Bring on today's BYU Sports Station headlines. There were 25 BYU football beats Virginia, 66-49. Wild game. BYU put up 734 yards of offense, tied for six most most yards in a game in BYU history. Most uh, points versus a Power 5 team in history. Tyler Algier had an all-time game as well, 266 yards. Tied a BYU single-game record with five rushing touchdowns. Woo! Here's Tyler. We just trusted the process, trusted a great – we had a great week of practice, even though – we just wanted it more. You know, it was a great team. They were they were a great team, you know, so uh, respect to them. But, you know, we just wanted it more, and I think all of us just, all the pieces came together. Tyler Ogier was like the last dude to come out of the locker room. That guy is <laughs> playing so hard, man. Cougars climb eight spots in the AP poll up to 17. Let's go. Host Idaho State on which channel? BYU TV this day. 
Could BYU work their way back into a New Year's Six conversation? We will discuss with Trevor Maddich in just a little bit. How about notable performances from Cougars in the NFL? Linebacker Sione Takitaki had three tackles in a Cleveland Browns loss. Offensive lineman Brady Christensen victorious with the Carolina Panthers 19-13. Kyrus Tonga had a tackle for loss. In a loss to Fred Warner and the San Francisco 49ers, Warner's numbers, solid. Eight tackles, five solo, and a win. Kyle Van Noy had a couple of tackles and a Patriots win against the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego. And my guy Dax Milne, one catch, 22 yards, and a Washington football team loss at Denver. Fury Hoops held its blue and white game Friday night. The blue team won 68-62. Alex Barcella did not play due to an injury, but... He told Spencer Linton during the game that uh, he fell in practice last week, but is expected to play in the season opener. And we hope Thursday night in the final exhibition against Colorado Christian. Congratulations to BYU men's and women's cross country who sweep the individual and team WCC championships. Yeah. The seventh consecutive WCC title for the men. Four straight for the women. Connor Mance took home his third individual title and Whitney Orton picked up her second utter Domination. Uh, Connor Mance third. That means he's the first Cougar to ever do that. Three individual titles. Crazy. Number seven, women's volleyball swept Santa Clara by 32 points Saturday. The Cougars' 14th consecutive win, 21 and one on the season, 11 and 0 in West Coast Conference play. They are just beating everybody up. It's crazy. BYU heads to Gonzaga and Portland this week. Number seven, rather number 11, BYU women's soccer falls at number 25 Santa Clara uh, on Saturday. This one stings for sure, and I didn't mean that one, one either. That's straight. I didn't even mean that one. <laughs> First loss by the Cougars in conference play this season. The ladies will stay on the road to face Portland this Wednesday, 10 Eastern. You can listen on the BYU Sports Network with Greg Rubel on the call. You hate oh, to lose to the rivals. That was a bummer. 1-0. Yeah. So now BYU needs some help to win an outright WCC title. Ashley, eh, tie, whatever. Ashley Hatch wins the NWSL Golden Boot. Ten goals on the season with their team. Uh, the Washington Spirit, who make the playoffs, play Sunday against the North Carolina Courage. That's a cool thing. She won the Golden Boot. Good Most for goals Ashley. In the and finally, Cougar Hoops overseas. Eric Mika, not a huge stat line. A point, an assist, a couple of rebounds, and a 15-point loss for his team. Charles Abu with 13 points in his most recent game. Brandon Averett, however, 32 points and eight rebounds. He's like 5'10". Okay. 32 and 8. 13 point win for his squad. Jake Toulson in Germany, 24 points, three rebounds, two assists, and a 95-85 win. Glad to hear those guys are doing well. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Those crazy Cavaliers and Cougars on Saturday night, 66 to 49. We asked last week, if BYU gets into a shootout, is that a good thing? Well, it turns out it was 17 plus, Jerem. 17 plus. <laughs> Maybe that's the craziest thing wow. that resulted from Saturday night or not. What was the craziest thing you witnessed on Saturday night against Virginia? There are a million things, but uh, the thing that sticks out is 66 points. What? Um, the second is 35 points allowed in a quarter. <laughs> Was Ty Dammer out there? No, it was Brennan Armstrong. Bummer that he got hurt, by the way. Um, yeah. Hoping he, he set the Virginia you know, season record there. Crazy. He's, he might be going for the ACC record, but hurt his ribs. Listen, but BYU is playing with the injured rib quarterback, too. But it, that's tough. That's tough. Tyler Algier, man. Holy shnikes. Jaron Hall was great. The Nakuas had the exact number of yards. By how the way. how weird is that? That's weird. Someone tweeted a meme of the, uh, the twins from Breaking Bad. Uh, with BYU stuff on, and then circled 107 and 110. Yes, they had the same stat line yeah. other than the catch number. Yes. Um, BYU Barstool tweeted, petition to rename UVA's team to Virginia Cav Algiers. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it was crazy, man. David Nixon, 66 points. We're going to fit right in with the Big 12. I mean, that that was the game I thought might happen against Baylor, but Baylor was was better. But what way to, way to show up. And then... Oh, I may have buried the lead, and I don't want to take every crazy angle here, but um, or maybe I do. I just did. Ver Sorry to interrupt. Okay, then don't interrupt. That's what people it's okay. Are. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, seven points allowed from BYU's defense in the second half after giving up 42 in the first half is just unbelievable. I talked to someone 
who was in the same uh, – so the media share the same bathroom as, like, the coaches at halftime um, if they're not down in the locker room. Lys Tuiaki was sweating, L- like literally. Understandably. Um, because that was a very difficult first half. Homie was dry as a whistle probably in the second half because BYU only gave up seven. I mean, the, the defense's ability to turn on a dime like that was incredible. And then we talked about turnover margin, plus three. Plus three is the difference in the game. It, it really is. It's pretty even except for those drives. BYU, BYU turns it into all... 21 points. Yes, yes. If there are zero turnovers in this game, BYU might lose the game. BYU needed those three, which is which is pretty crazy. So Kalani Satake uh, says, put some respect on uh, Elias Tuyaki's name here. Drop eight won the game for us. And that was Elias Tuyaki's idea. Uh, that wasn't really the game plan, but we were going to mix in some man drop base. He did that in the second half and held him seven points, a really, really explosive offense of seven points. I think people need to respect him a little bit more now. Seven, seven bro- points in the second brought half. Brought to you by Dasani on the, on the table there. There you go. <laughs> the juxtaposition of what happened from one half to the next Crazy. with the BYU defense and the Virginia offense is Probably the craziest thing that I've seen. 35 points in the second quarter. Unstoppable. And all five of those drives were under a minute 47. They were just chunks. That, that yeah. is ridiculous. Five touchdown drives all under two minutes. And look at the yards per play difference. 12 to 5 in the second half. I mean, insane. But credit BYU and their defensive coordinator, Elisa Tuiaki, for coming up with the necessary adjustments. And yes, as you pointed out, Three to nothing in the turnover margin, and you turn that into twenty-one points. Difference seventeen in the game. plus is that's the reason seventeen plus happens. Wow! Uh, and how big was the second turnover that Uriah Leatawa forces mm-hmm. when it felt back and forth, back and forth? Whoever's going to end with the ball is going to win the game. Until BYU created that turnover, I thought that that was how it was going to play out. Uh, whoever has the ball, that's going to win. Toledo, 2016, 55-53. If both if Virginia would have scored one more time, it would have been just the fifth game in BYU history where both teams scored 50. I mean, it was almost there. So cra- crazy. Oh, you remember the 21 nothing thing I brought up last week? It happened again. Yep. But this time BYU was up. So BYU was down 21 nothing in 99 and 2000 against Virginia. And then BYU was up 21 nothing, but then later trailed multiple times. BYU's ability to answer in the shootout, it's not a shootout if both teams don't answer. So... BYU's ability to do what it didn't do at Baylor was great. And Virginia obviously is not Baylor. And Virginia's defense is terrible, which is shocking, by the way. That I, I, We all respect Bronco Mendenhall and that, and that staff of guys and what they can do. That offense is as, as good as the defense is bad, which is weird to see a Bronco Mendenhall defense give up that many points. They played two ranked teams now, and they gave up 59 and 66 in those games. Wow. Well, and this is a defense in Virginia that I'm looking at a few weeks ago, and I'm like, maybe they aren't that bad. They, they shut out Duke. And I know Duke's bad. Duke's the worst. Duke's bad. Yeah. But yeah. zero points. I'm like, okay, they're, they're capable. He only puts up 66. 66. <laughs> 66 what? points. A Route 66, which is a record for BYU against a Power 5 opponent. Yeah. The previous high was 59 against UCLA in mm-hmm. 2008. Well, I'll remember that one. 66 okay. points. Tyler Algier Let's talk about the it. charge. Unbelievable. Let's talk about it. So Cam Miller, homie. Tyler Algier over his last two games. 61 carries because he had 29 in this mm-hmm. one. 457 yards, 7.5 yards carry, 7 touchdowns. Um, on College Football Final on ESPN, which I love watching just to recap all the highlights, Saturday nights, Sunday mornings, is they said if Tyler Algier played in the afternoons, we would be talking about him like we're talking about you know, the other running backs. B. John Robinson and Kenneth Walker the guys. third from yes. Michigan State. Yes. Kenneth Walker the third had a tremendous game against Michigan, right? Tyler, this is one of those things where BYU is a great late night game for ESPN, ESPN2. And the cost of business is that people don't know how good Tyler Algier is. Ty, you know who will, though? NFL teams. Because Tyler Algier is climbing before the season. Is he an NFL draft pick? Question mark. It's like third or fourth round guy probably now. Like, How good is his footwork and his burst in the second level? He's so good. He's so – he's like his deep blue outlined it, right, like what he's gone through personally. Amazing. He's having such a good year. MVP by far of this team. Crazy, man. And uh, BYU's, BYU's crushing it, dude. BYU's 7-2. and two. 
Like, how awesome is this? BYU's going to be 9-2 and two going into SC. And Drake London's out. So that game feels more winnable. Let's go. Tyler Algier working the late night shift at Walmart to make ends meet and pay for himself to go to school. Pretty soon he's going to be able to buy his own Walmart, Jerem. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible performance yeah. And he by told Tyler. me, he, cor- he corrected that a little bit. He, he said he never did. I said, you did graveyards? And he goes, no, it was like, I'd show up in the evening and go to like when they close, you know, 10 or midnight. So it wasn't like graveyard, but still, homie was at Walmart doing what he could as a walk on like he had to get a job like walk on linebacker right and now he's now he's gonna get uh you know a signing bonus that's gonna be incredible in the nfl and like i know everyone wants him to stay yes he should go like he should i I would love for him to stay i remember the first time i thought now wait a second tyler algier might just be special it was that burst against umass a terrible umass team Mm. but he sprinted down the sideline for a touchdown and i was like Left to right, he wait, caught a pass. Wait a second. Yeah, he caught a pass Yeah, on the high right side and sprinted up. Yeah. Our question of the day, and maybe it's Algier and his numbers, what was the craziest thing you saw in the BYU 66-49 win against Virginia? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Caleb Hatch on Instagram says, BYU's offense played their most complete game all season. Very impressed. Even the defense played well for three quarters. Not going to mention the second quarter. Hashtag BYUSN. By the way, I put out, is the 2021 BYU football team better than last year's last night? Interesting results. I'll tell you later. It's so tough to know because the schedules are so different. Ugh. It was a tight vote. Coming up, a celebrity shout-out for Puka Nakua. And ESPN's Trevor Maddich on what BYU has to do to climb even higher in the rankings and how Tyler Algier becomes a legitimate Doak Walker Award candidate. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today on Coordinator's Corner, offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick, special teams coordinator Ed Lamb joined the program to recap the crazy game with Virginia. Look ahead to Idaho State live on BYU TV. Catch it on the BYU TV app right after us at 1 Eastern. 
We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. Joining us now, as he does every Monday during college football season, is ESPN College Football Insider and Analyst, BYU National Champion Trevor Maddich, on for another Maddich Monday, 66-49, to Trevor. I hope you had caffeine and were ready to stay up late to watch a long, wild, crazy game. How would you describe what happened at Lavelle Edwards Stadium on Saturday night? Well, who needs caffeine where you can replay that game? <laughs> I mean, for goodness sake, if I'm driving late at night now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to, to do anything other than play back the audio of the that game. It was just incredible. It was just fantastic. And what a treat for the fans that were there. I mean, a power five team with the best passing offense in the country. It was a track meet in the first half, and then the second half was a different game. BYU continued the track meet, but the BYU defense locked down. Everything about that game was so exciting to watch, and at the end, it was so fulfilling. It was so crazy. It was just crazy. BYU needed 50 points to win this game because there's a 35-point quarter from Virginia. It felt like, oh, man, obviously, you know, in the middle of the second quarter, it's like, okay, it's shoot out, it's shoot out. I'm impressed that BYU did what it didn't do at Baylor, which was keep up, right, and then exceed and win. Let's talk about, obviously, the highlight of Tyler Ogier. I mean, homie goes for 266 and 5, averaging 9 a carry. This was uh, an incredible game from him. He had a chance at the all-time record. He's only 21 yards away from uh, passing Jamal Williams there, but he ties the touchdown record. Tyler Ogier was, was the key to kind of finish the, finishing this thing off. Yeah, he was really the the best defense, as good as the best de- as well as the defense played in the second half. Tyler Algier taking over almost 200 yards of the ground in the second half from that guy. I mean, that kept the Virginia offense off the field, and Virginia knew that that's what they were going to do. Bronco Mendenhall and his staff is one of the best defensive staffs in college football. If they want to take something away from you, they can usually take that away and make you beat them another way. But they could not take Tyler Algier away. And looking at it nationally. This really has become the year of the running back. There are great running backs all over the country. We just saw Michigan State, Kenneth Walker III, light up Michigan in a top 10 matchup. And he's now maybe the Heisman front runner, certainly one of the top Heisman candidates that will be in the conversation this week. You've got at Ohio State, Travion Henderson. You've got a couple of guys at Georgia. You've got good running backs at Alabama. Really, the leading running back in the nation is at Syracuse, Sean Tucker. Right, you've got great running backs, Texas, Bijan Robinson, all over the country. And Tyler Algier deserves to be in that top tier. He deserves to be seen as every bit as good as every one of those guys that'll be talked about as Heisman candidates. Wow, Trevor Maddox with us on BYU Sports Nation. Algier with the 16 rushing touchdowns. That's number one in the country. He's top five in the country in rush yards at 1,127. Trevor, is there anything that Tyler can do over the final three games against Idaho State, Georgia Southern, and USC to really get into that serious conversation about being a Doak Walker Award finalist? If so, what is it? What he needs to do is just be as dominant as he was against Virginia. And just carry people, just run through people, and then outrun people once he breaks into the open field, which he's done most of the season. And those are the kinds of things that he'll need to do now because because that game was on national television. It was primetime out west. And it was, you know, here on the East Coast, it uh, it was a 10-15 kickoff. But at the same time, people will see those highlights because the highlights were so spectacular, even if they went to bed before they got to see much of that game. And they'll be looking at Tyler and be wondering, gee, is this a guy I need to, to vote for? Whether they're a Heisman voter, a Doak Walker voter, an All-America voter. And what he needs to do in the next two games against really lesser competition, no disrespect, but they're not Power 5 competition. Whoa, you know, whoa, he, whoa. Needs to, he needs to just be a beast. What? Wait, don't sleep on Idaho State. What? You right? can't sleep on Idaho State. Yeah, but I, I'm afraid some people will, and that would be that would be a dangerous thing because when you sleep on Idaho State, you usually get scorched. So BYU will have to be careful about this game. We're not actually not being terribly, uh, well, slightly facetious, but but <laughs> against this competition, right? Georgia Southern and Idaho State. He needs to look like one of the best backs in the country, not play down to the competition. USC is not the USC of of, of several years ago, but at the same time, USC can step up. 
And UFC is in a position to, to be a, the kind of opponent that Algier could make a closing statement on in the regular season. Those are the things that he needs to do. Be as dominant as you would expect a great running back to be against the competition that you happen to have left on your schedule. Okay, uh, we talked about Tyler Algier. Jaron Hall, I don't think he's being discussed enough about how good he was in this game. Uh, 22 of 37, 349 yards, three touchdowns, some excellent throws, no uh, giveaways, a 165 passer rating. He, 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 I mean, Washington State was a Tyler Algier game, but besides that, three of the last four, he's thrown for 300 plus, two in losses. You could argue some garbage yards, that, but these were not. He had to keep up. He hadn't had a game like this, Trevor. What did that mean for his development as, as a quarterback? Jaron Hall isn't just a capable replacement for Zach Wilson. He's proven himself to be a star in his own right. He's always been mobile. He's been able to run, and he's had that plan B uh, ever since he started playing quarterback, that if things broke down, he could just take off. But we've seen him grow as a quarterback, as a passer over the last couple of years. And let's compare him to Wilson because a lot of people will. Last year, Zach Wilson, in terms of QBR, quarterback rating, finished fourth in the nation at 88. Now, QBR ranks everything that you do at quarterback which is to say you're, you're passing, you're running, and when you do things, not just what you do. If you make a big play on third down, that's more important than making a big play on first down in QBR. So it's a more accurate depiction of what you've done. Last year, Zach Wilson, about 88 fourth in the nation out of 100. This year, so far, having played far more Power 5 teams, actually six more so far because Wilson didn't play any Power 5 teams last year, Jared Hall is about 79, and he's 10th in the nation. So 100 is perfect. You've got Wilson at 80, 88. You've got Hall at 79, even though Hall played a much more difficult schedule. So when you make that comparison that way, you have to start looking at Jaron Hall, not just the guy who's done a good job filling in for one of the greatest BYU quarterbacks of all time, but rather a guy who has come in and taken over the job and shown that he is worthy, not just as a, a quarter, the next quarterback, but worthy as a star. It's another Matt. It's Monday on BYU Sports Nation. Clearly, Tyler Algier, Jaron Hall, the Nakua brothers did their thing on offense. 66 points, the most that BYU has ever scored against any Power 5 opponent in program history. But I want to go back to something that you brought up just a few moments ago, and that is the BYU defense locking it down in the second half after giving up 42 at home in the first half. Trevor, from your perspective, what did you see and what changed to benefit BYU in the second half, holding Virginia to only seven points? Well, there were two things. One is that they just they played better. They tackled better. They took better angles in the second half. But the other, I think you've really got to give Eliza Tuiaki, the defensive coordinator, and his staff a lot of credit for the adjustments that they made at halftime. It looked like in the first half, what they tried to do was heat up Brennan Armstrong, the Virginia quarterback, make him throw before he was really ready to, and then play a lot of press man, a lot of tight coverage to give him or to take away the easier throws. Well, Armstrong is one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. He came into the game leading the nation in passing, and he was averaging over 400 yards per game. Well, in the second half, his performance was so limited by BYU that instead of 400, he was about, what, 340 or so? And so BYU did a good job over the course of the four quarters in limiting him, but it was a tale of two halves. Because in the second half, the adjustment that they made was to understand that they weren't getting to Armstrong enough to affect him. And they were getting burned in the secondary. So they started to rush three and drop eight a lot. What that did was put a lot of guys in the secondary to rally to the ball. Armstrong still made his uh, his throws. He still had his completions, but now instead of being long touchdowns and they had four touchdowns of 30 yards or more uh, in the second quarter, I believe, and certainly in the first half, I mean, they were gouging BYU's defense. Now, all of a sudden, when those balls were completed, there were a lot of defenders to rally and make the tackle. And that was the adjustment. Instead of heating up the quarterback, being a little bit at risk at the back end, they said, quarterback's going to throw, we're going to rally at the back end. And, and I think the, the defensive staff, especially Coach Tuiaki, deserves a lot of credit for reading the way the game was flowing and making the exact right adjustment. Listen, 42 points on six straight touchdown drives is tough, but seven points allowed in the second half. Now, that's incredible. The BYU offense did its job, too, having to score 50-plus in this one. And they did. And then uh, BYU jumps eight spots in the AP poll up to 17 now. 
It's kind of interesting. BYU 7 and 2. You'd think BYU wins the next two. Obviously, Idaho State and George Southern to get to 9 and 2. Drake London's out for the season now for USC, their best player, the best player BYU would play, in my opinion, all year. USC game feels winnable. Is 10 and 2 regular season out of the question right now? Do you feel like that will happen? No. No, it, it should happen. I mean, the only team for the rest of the schedule that can really beat BYU is BYU. USC is dangerous because, you know, they, they lost their coach. And they've been up and down since then. Washington State lost their coach. And the next week, BYU was in a real fight against those Cougars from Pullman because Washington State really rallied together in the locker room and they took ownership of the situation. And they were a much tougher opponent, I think, than a lot of Cougar fan, BYU fans uh, had expected. With this being the last game of the regular season, who knows how USC will come together as a team in that locker room? Who knows what kind of performance they'll have? So it could be that it's a, a, a very winnable game for BYU. It could be that it's a, a serious fight as well. So we don't know about USC. But really, 10-2 and two is, <laughs> against this schedule, if somebody would have told you in August that BYU was going to finish 10-2 and two, if they do, would you have taken that? <laughs> you know we million would have. percent, yep. Man, that, that's fantastic. So they still have a lot of football left to play before that happens. And I, But if they do get to 10-2, and two, I think the one big regret is going to be Boise State. No disrespect to Boise, but BYU lost that game because they made uncharacteristic mistakes. They made three fumbles that either set up Boise for a short touchdowns or took away what, what would have probably been points, a touchdown or a field goal, when they fumbled the ball on the 19-yard line going in. Those three plays are the ones I think you look back on and say, whoa, if we'd have held on to those footballs. Because 10-2 and two is fantastic. 11-1 and one is New Year's 6. Either way, there's still a possibility for New Year's 6. Yeah, let's discuss that more. Because of the chaos within college football in general, and it's becoming the norm from week to week to see anywhere between six and nine teams in the top 25 lose, which is a record pace. 61 teams thus far in the top 25 have lost to this point in the season. Trevor, what's the peak for BYU even with those two losses? Where, where do you see the Cougars ending up if they do get to 10-2 and two in the AP poll and, more importantly, in the college football playoff rankings? You know, it all depends on the help that they get because at this point they do need to get help. I don't think the committee will, will afford them too much juice for winning out at this point. Again, USC is a really tricky game, but the committee will look at USC as a team that's, that's kind of broken right now, even though I don't. I see them as a team that's backed into a corner. And so, uh, but the point is that that what happens in front of BYU now will matter. But a lot of those teams are playing against each other, right? I mean, Baylor beat BYU, so there's head-to-head -head there. But at the same time, they still have to play Oklahoma. Oklahoma State still has to play Oklahoma. So Cougar fans need to be big Oklahoma fans right now. You know, and, and other teams, Auburn still has to play Alabama. So we'll see how that one goes. They just had a big win over, over Ole Miss. But at the same time, if Alabama you know, stomps them in the Iron Bowl, maybe there's a chance BYU could slip ahead of them. So really looking at the rest of the country is going to be key for BYU. And right now at 17, that's in the AP poll. We don't know what the committee will do. Their, their rankings come out tomorrow, and the AP poll does not matter in who makes it into the New Year's Six. Only the college football playoff poll, the committee's poll uh, ranking matters. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. We're gearing up for a very exciting finish to this BYU football season. Trevor Maddich, it's always a pleasure to talk to you during the college football season. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich, longtime college football analyst, uh, speculating how we've been speculating. What What's the peak now for BYU if they went out 10-2? and two? And, and he brought up a point that a lot of people are talking about, which is, ah, oh, the boys stay game. Ah. Like the Baylor game, you just tip your hat, right? They were better, um, and they w would be most days, I think. Um, but I, I have a mild issue with that because I understand, but I also don't feel like you can just ignore the close games that BYU won. Like, that was always going to happen. Well, no, BYU did the opposite that day, and it worked out nicely, which is great. So j just be careful with that logic, I think, of like, oh, we were always going to win those games, and we should have won that one. Well, maybe the Arizona State game, Tyler Algier doesn't make that play, and the Utah game, you, you're not plus two or three in turnover. Like, BYU's done a nice job of, of – maximizing, I think, what this timeline in the multiverse <laughs> was like, which is last week I said, I feel like BYU's a 4-4 four and four team that's 6-2. and two. A couple of those games went BYU's way. It took care of the ball. It was awesome. Executed. Isom drives. What if BYU didn't do that a game or two? They would have lost another game or two. But as you often bring up, they did. And as fickle as national writers can be, you know they're always going to focus on, well, who won the game? 
And we're in the right. details. We're right. in the details. Yes. So a lot of the time they just look at 27-17, oh, 10-point win. 26-17, oh, 9-point win. Yeah, I, I just think we need to take it all together. Sure, and go. we can. BYU 6-2, and two, amazing. Took care of the ball in a few games. Probably would have lost. Yeah, we yeah. can. Yeah, 7-2. Yeah. and two, but, they, but the writers, they're just going to look at wins and losses. So, well, it's not everybody. It's, it's, it's people I talk to around here. It's uh, Trev. It's everybody, you know. There are two sides of that, yeah. Coming up, Ed Eyestone celebrates the championship with us. And what is the Midnight Virgil? Another uniform combo coming out. How do you feel about a BYU Sports Nation? This is BYU Sports Nation. Virgil getting love. I like that. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. family if you're looking for something new to watch stop scrolling and start streaming BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together from bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun there's something for everyone binge entire series experience all the feels immerse in non-stop entry and treat yourself to unexpected turns think you know BYU TV we're just getting started This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. BYU football declines stock airs tomorrow on the BYU TV app, 8.30 Eastern, as Gregor Bell talks with the coach about the Virginia game, previews the Idaho State game live on BYU TV. And our newest Steve Blue is about Idaho State assistant coach David Fiafia's son, who was a true blue hero at BYU earlier this season. His inspiring story coming up tomorrow night. We are looking forward to that. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on the social media platforms, Facebook or Meta. Is it official? Like, is it changed? I don't know. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Meta. and TikTok. Dot com. Meta. Goes to Facebook. Let's whip it. Okay. Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Cougar Nakua had eight catches for 107 and a touchdown Saturday. Got a shout-out from UFC owner Dana White Saturday on uh, White's IG story. Cougar played Pop Warner with White's son Dana the third On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rate the celebrity shout-out? That's right about a 9. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than UFC president Dana White. It would take like a Hollywood movie star to probably top that given how much influence he has on the world of sports and just really the, the world in pop culture. Yeah, I'd give it a nine. Yeah, nine. Who sent him the video? Because this is like on the field. Dan right wasn't there. At the game, though. Pretty cool. Someone sent him. Those Vegas connections. Hey, Puka, can I get some ringside seats? ESPN's Football Power Index gives BYU a 99% chance of beating Idaho State. That's it? Just a 42.3% chance of winning at USC. And a 36.5% chance to win out. Which percentage is the most surprising of those three projections? USC by far. Yeah. What? Uh, what? Why is that? Why is that? Shouldn't BYU be the 58? Why do the numbers from ESPN hate BYU at USC? I'm interested to see what Vegas says. Because Vegas told us, hey, Baylor, Baylor's better than Brigham. Yeah, that clearly is the most surprising one. Just 42.3% chance to win at USC, given no head coach and all the struggles that the Trojans have had this year. And they just lost Vic the best Vic Soto, player. we're coming for you. Let's go. Hey, Vic, 
Love to have you back here. The Jets, Mike White throws 405, three touchdowns, two picks, and a Jets win in relief of the injured Zach Wilson against your Bengals. Should Zach Wilson be worried? No, but I should probably be worried about my Bengals. <laughs> That's a bad thought. That was more of what I've come to expect from the Bengals over the last two days. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm kind of happy for Zach Wilson and the Jets, though, because they've had so many struggles. To do with Zach. But Zach doesn't play. No, he didn't play. He Who's Mike be worried? White? I mean, if if Mike White is the starter when Zach Wilson is healthy, then Zach should be worried. BYU football will rock a uniform combo dubbed the Midnight Virgil for Idaho State. It's the 10th different uniform combo of the season. Where does this get up rank in the 2021 wardrobe rundown? Forrest. No, I don't have a ranking for them. It's nice, dude. I like it. Any, uh, listen, the Navy helmet, dope. Mm -hmm. I love the Navy top, white pants, all good, baby. It looks amazing. I love it. Very clean look. And last Saturday night, with the royal helmet and the royal jerseys with the white pants, I thought that was super really? clean. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, I like them all. I, I thought. Is there I, anyone you didn't like? Um, may, I wasn't a huge fan of the one at Baylor. It was okay. I, I wasn't a huge I fan of the was. Navy helmet, white shirt, Navy pants. Yeah. I kind of like the same color good. helmet with the same color jersey. Oh, okay. Like the Navy helmet and Navy jersey with white pants, super clean. Fan of the program, Erica Ellen tweeted the following on Saturday. For the BYU game, my niece spotted a man with blonde hair wearing white pants and a BYU shirt in the parking lot and yelled, That's Spencer! <laughs> Apparently, she assumes all men fitting that description are Spencer Linton thanks to her casual viewing of BYU Sports Nation. Spencer, should we call the white pants, blonde hair, uh, uniform <laughs> combo the Spencer Linton? Who else is wearing white pants consistently after Labor Day? Sure, yeah, why Every not? Every time I wear white pants, it's in the temple. Maybe it was me in the parking lot, and I was walking into the game. Just depends on how early they were there. You're probably not. We're there super early. But, yeah, the white pants are a thing. I had a fan come up to me on the sidelines in the middle of the game and say, hey, dude, what's the deal with the white pants? Like, can you explain the backstory? You're like, what's the deal with that question? And I'm like, <laughs> hey, it's a shout-out to my uh, peeps in the desert. I was given white golf pants by one of my favorite coaches when I was working in Palm Springs. Gave me two pairs. And uh, he's recently passed away. Gave you a pair? Two. Two pairs. Yeah, the team pants. So, uh, pair is two. So. And then white pants Friday became a thing. And white it, pants It's my Friday. thing, right? It's my thing. It's a thing that you have. Sure. You have many things. Let's say it's not the thing. You have many <laughs> things. Coming up, rise and shout-out. Plus... All-American Olympian national champion, both as an athlete and a coach. Ed Isone joins us to recap another WCC championship weekend for BYU cross country. How do the Cougars make it another national title in 2021? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life. When you live at Trio, less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Your number is 32,709. Can you use it in a sentence? 32,709 bananas are an excellent source of potassium. Three, two, seven, zero, nine. That is correct.
What a great premise for a competition, right? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. After further review, they have no plays to review tomorrow night. It's going to be a very short, no, it's going to be like, they may have to do like a four-hour edition. Oh, it's just a one-hour? Okay. Mm -hmm. After further review, tomorrow night on the app, 70 Eastern. It's just the scoring plays, and if that, they only that will did, easily fill an hour. You scored nine touchdowns. <laughs> Virginia scored seven. Like, what? How about those 16 plays? You're wow. done. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station Crazy. live in Studio B. It is our pleasure to welcome in an Olympian, an All-American, and a national champion, both as an athlete and a coach, Ed Eyestone, back on the program. Ed, Welcome back. Good to be here, Joe. Congratulations on another Good. championship weekend. It's always fun to be here, particularly after winning a championship, two championships on the men's and women's side. So which thank is, you. Which is big time. And you guys have massive goals, but it starts with this, right? you gotta got to win the WCC. Well, yeah. I mean, we kind of divide the, the season up into thirds. There's kind of the preseason and regular season and then the championship portion of the season. And this is what we get excited about. And it starts with winning the championship. I think that's the level of expectation that we have. Um, on the men's side, we have uh, two very very good schools, nationally ranked schools that we know we're going to go against in terms of Portland and Gonzaga. And uh, we were able to successfully execute our plan. And that was just to get out and run hard. And uh, so it was it was nice to come up with the championship. So you got paid to coach team by saying run out, get out there and yeah, run hard? Yeah, it's pretty technical. It's really technical. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get one out there and run hard, of, everyone. One foot in front of the other. <laughs> repeat. Um, <clears throat> no, but I have a great group of, of young men that I'm working with. And uh, Connor Mance, obviously a national champion. Yeah. He wants to uh, repeat with that national championship. And then Casey Klinger, who I think sometimes gets overlooked a little bit, but he is the guy, the steady um, guy that, that we can count on as our, as our number two and just uh, ran another superb super race on his part. And I think with that one-two combo, uh, we know we're going to do well at the, the conference level. And now we just need to continue to push that uh, to the national national level yeah i knew there was more to the answer i knew it. yes it's not like a nascar coach it's like just drive fast we'll change your tires turn occasionally turn, turn left yeah. slightly yeah <laughs> the byu men just won a seventh consecutive team championship the women win a fourth straight consecutive championship at the west coast conference level how do those teams adequately celebrate a championship like that well i think we we're we're trying to put our celebration on hold until the national championships are over. I, and again, that's not putting pressure on our backs that, you know, we have to, in the women's case, repeat what coach uh, Taylor's doing an excellent job. And I think they're, they're a strong team and they're, I, th I think they're hitting their stride at the right time of the season. And, and on the men's side, uh, we just want to go in and execute, control the controllable, run the best races that we can, and then let the chips fly. And I think if we do that, I think we have a chance to climb onto that podium, uh, a top four team and you know anytime you're in the conversation for a top four performance then things fall right and and uh, and you can really execute that day then then you might come a little closer to the top what's the key for the men in the national championships because last year I know uh, you wanted to Fair a little better. Still fared well, but I know you guys have that well, goal. Yeah, yeah, last year was tough. We we had some heat issues, and, and one of our runners uh, ended up not finishing, and which cost us a lot of points there towards the end. But, you know, you got to compliment someone who goes out and puts himself in a position to run himself into the ground. Uh, this year, uh, though, I think we just – if we can just get out and do what we need to, uh, which is Connor Mance will not be satisfied with anything less than defending his national title. I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on his back. There's a very, very probably the most talented NCAA's that we've seen for many, many years. Mm. Uh, and because everyone came back with COVID. Yeah, yeah, I think we've got a lot of guys, fifth, sixth year guys coming back. And so by the time he takes care of uh, both the, the foreign and domestic talent that he's got to, uh, that he's got to face. Um, but if he can just put himself in a good position and uh, you know be in the in the front in in the conversation to repeat, uh, that means he's going to be a low stick. He's going to score just one, two three points hopefully just one point and then anytime you know you have a guy up front who has a chance to win then really you're just scoring four guys so you just got to get those four guys uh going as well as they can and as i mentioned casey klinger uh brandon garnica uh they've been very consistent they are all american caliber and certainly top 10 to 15 caliber um and then it's going to come down really to your four or five and traditionally the team that's had the lowest scoring fourth man ends up winning the national ah, championship okay. okay so so yeah and 
again, we've uh, we have a couple guys, uh, really good guys in that position in Aiden Troutner, uh, who was an NXN high school champion in cross country, and um, Lucas Bonds, who's a freshman uh, of the year, baby. freshman of the year, and was a great uh, 1500 meter runner. And, and this season, it's just been a matter of okay, let's stretch it out. Let's turn you from a 1500 meter guy into a 10,000 meter guy. And so that's that's quite the stretch. That's though, a right? big stretch. That's a big stretch. Yeah. And uh, he has taken that challenge on well, and he continues to do that much better each uh, race. Uh, and I think if Aiden and uh, Lucas can put themselves in a position to hopefully qualify as All-American being in the top 40, then I think we will be in the conversation for uh, at least a top four uh, performance. And again, I think uh, this year in terms of teams, it's probably the strongest, deepest team field that we've seen on the men's side for a long, long time. I think there are seven teams that are in the conversation uh, to be a, a top four team. Ed Eisenhower with us on BYU Sports Nation. Both teams, the men's and women's, have national titles in the last three years. The women coming off of uh, that last year's success. What are your expectations headed to Tallahassee for nationals this year, specifically on the women's side? Well, on the women's side, I, and again, would have to have Coach uh, Taylor address that uh, directly because I don't want to speak for her, but I know that she has a very talented complement of uh, young ladies. She has them in great uh, condition and really uh, what it comes down to in our sports often is just keeping her athletes healthy and she's done a very very good job of that Whitney Orton um, uh, won the won the conference championship and she'll certainly be in the conversation uh, to uh, do well at the national uh, meet uh, again Whitney's someone like a Connor Mance who on the women's side we know can be up there be a very low stick and then she's got a lot of help uh, Anna Camp you see here uh, the two embracing there at the finish line I think Anna Camp who is a 1,500-meter national champion. So, again, kind of like a Lucas Bonds now is having to stretch up to the, – the, the women just go 6,000 meters, so it's not quite the stretch for a 1,500-meter runner, but Anna Camp's very talented. So I, I think between those two plus the other complement of young uh, athletes that she has, they are in a position – I think we're both in good positions because I don't think we're going to be, after this last weekend, ranked uh, number one in the country. I think Diljit's squad will probably be ranked number two or three. I think our men are going to be probably somewhere in the 5-6 category. Category, okay. And that's kind of a nice position to be in up going up. in yeah. to the, the national meet. Plus, we are hosting the Mountain Regional competition coming up in uh, two weeks or two weeks from last Friday. So that's probably another thing for lo the locals. If they want to see uh, national championship caliber uh, teams competing, they really ought to come out uh, on November. Well, I wrote it down here. November 12th uh, there at the East Bay. It's actually called Timpanogos Golf Course now. Yeah. Friday morning. Yeah, yeah. that'll, that'll yeah. be good. I just want to thank you for giving us, uh, as BYU fans collectively, less heartburn in the WCC championships than BYU football gave to uh, the fan base on Saturday night. You know, that was a fun game. I, I mean, <laughs> that harkened back to the 80s when we it was we would score 60 points on a on a regular basis. So that was kind of fun. In fact, my wife after we after it was 21 to nothing there in the what first five minutes or whatever, I kind of turned around and said, you know, we I hope Bronco can score here. And she said, no, we cannot let Bronco <laughs> score because he will come back, and he did come back. So. It made it for a very entertaining game. So, yeah, it's all good. Congratulations on all your success, Coach. Thank you. Take some karma. Take it to Nationals. Let's go, man. Okay. We'll try to bring it. Thanks, Ed. Okay, coming up, prop pick results. Plus an international trip and a bunch of personal sacrifices headline our rise and shout out. This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. 
Stories have a way of framing some of the important conversations that we're already having and giving us the language that we sometimes have a hard time finding. The Appleseed is a show filled with stories for you and your family. Tall tales, fairy tales, folk tales, personal and family tales, all kinds of tales from all kinds of tellers. And we always hope that the stories that we bring you on the show spark memories for you that you can share with the people that you love. This week, I'm heading to Long Beach, California to meet the Wackerman Nulty family. Colby is our amazing puppy. It's just hard to see people and animals left behind. It's awesome. I mean, not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. We're worried about Colby's future if he doesn't get help. He really, in a way, embodies resilience. He should have energy to move, and he doesn't. He needs his fourth leg. It feels like a miracle that somebody could give him a whole new lease on life. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, I talked with national champion quarterback Robbie Bosco about the BYU coach pacing by his math class on signing day, how he played on an injured knee in the Holiday Bowl to win a national championship in 84, and the influence his dad had on his career. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Time now for our prop pick recap in that wild Virginia BYU game. Number one, we asked, what will Tyler Algiers' yards per carry average be? And much like last week, we were way off. Nailed it. Nope. I had Tyler with 5.5 yards per carry. He was averaging 5.1 going into the game. Jeremy had him at 4.9. He averaged 9.2 yards per carry. Crazy. Number two, how many points will be scored by both teams? We were way off on that. They combined for a million. Spence said 61. I said 74. So I guess I get the point. Yeah, you're closer to the hole. I was closer to the hole on 41 uh, points off. yards per carry. Now for the tiebreaker, <laughs> number three. Which quarter will BYU score the most points and how many? Now, I had the second quarter because that had been the most successful quarter for BYU going into the game. That was not the case. You picked the third quarter. Yeah. Uh, it was the first and fourth. They scored 21 points in the first and 21 points in the fourth. In fact, they scored the first 21 of the game and the last 21 of the Boring. game. Boring. Okay. Man, oh, man. So uh, that is a tie, and we end with a tie. So I'm up two still. Three, one, 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 one. Who's this tie guy? T-I-E. He's got two points. Well, I know a different tie, but it was his birthday on Saturday, too, by the way. Our question of the day. What was the craziest thing you saw in the BYU win over Virginia? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resorts. Justin Anderson on Instagram says, Isaac Rex's hurdle. Do they practice that regularly with the tight end group? Because it seems like he or Mason Wake go for a hurdle every game. Crazy, right? I was a little worried about him when he came down on his back that hard. Well, it was like his shoulder. I was like, Ooh. oh, my goodness. Yeah. But he popped right back up. <laughs> popped. But- Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Judy and Alyssa Provenzano are the family that took in Atiki Ali Atiki in Ontario. They were at the game. I talked to them. They came a long ways to support him. He'll, they'll be back here for the guns that game in February. You travel all the way from Canada. Crazy. For the blue and white game. How cool is that? Our thanks to today's guest, ESPN's Trevor Maddich and Coach Ed Eisen of the dominant cross-country teams at BYU. Sorry to Dennis, no time. For Jeremiah, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Billy Green. We'll see you on Coordinator's Corner live on the BYU TV app in about two minutes. Go Cougs. Who's Billy Green? Quarterback? What?